Hello everyone, welcome to my next lesson on coastal navigation. First, I need to state my standard disclaimer. These navigation videos are for educational and explanatory purposes only. They are not intended to guarantee your safety on the water. Nothing, including these videos, can take the place of accredited courses from qualified instructors and developing your own navigation skills over time. You are responsible for choosing destinations and cruising areas that are within your own level of experience and ability. Any charts you may see in this video are not for navigation purposes. They may be out of date and they are for explanation purposes only. When you go out on the water, you are enjoying yourself at your own risk. This particular lesson has no technical content. It's intended to provide some very important tips when it comes to practical coastal navigation. So you'd like to head out on that beautiful sailing or power yacht for a wonderful week or 10 day vacation in some of the most beautiful cruising waters in the world. Me too. But if you're going to skipper that charter yacht, which is someone else's dream boat, it comes with responsibility. That's why you had to pass that pleasure craft operator's card to legally operate that boat. It's not like driving a car, you don't just turn it on and go. And you don't want to lose your deposit of thousands of dollars either. It's a different world out there with different rules and hazards. You have a responsibility for the safety of the boat and passengers. You have a responsibility to know and understand how to use the systems on the boat. You have a responsibility to understand and brief your passengers on the use of safety equipment. You have a responsibility to keep up your knowledge and training. You have a responsibility to plan your trip, to obtain weather forecasts, and you have a responsibility to know where you are at all times. And that brings me to my first and most important navigation tip. Simply said, you are not where you think you are. The biggest navigation mistake I observe students make is that they don't question whether or not they are really located where they think they are. And most often, they are not where they think they are. When they look at a chart, it is primarily to decide on a direction to go. But the problem with that approach is that they are not where they think they are. The first and primary use of a marine navigation chart is to find out or to verify your location on the chart. That's right, whenever you first glance at your chart, your first thought before anything else is, use all the land features and islands and navigation aids around you to determine or verify your location. It doesn't matter how many times you've been there before, it doesn't matter how well you think you know these waters, your first activity looking at a chart is to determine or verify your location. I might look at a chart a dozen times to verify my location in an unfamiliar area. And I might be doing that every five minutes as I'm progressing through an unfamiliar area. When you're looking down on a chart, it all seems so clear. But when you're down on the water, you're looking out horizontally and things look different. Things are moving by and changing relative position quickly. Perspective is changing quickly. Distances are hard, if not impossible, to judge. Some islands are hidden by others. Now, until you can automatically adopt the mindset that your first task, whenever you look at a chart, is to use it to determine or verify your location by a careful comparison of the chart to the land features and islands around you. And until you can abandon the idea that you are where you think you are, then don't venture into areas you're not familiar with. There's a corollary to the statement that you aren't where you think you are, and that is, you're not siding on what you think you are. 
It doesn't matter how many magnetic sightings you take if they're not on the right land feature or navigation aid. You must look around for what other islands are nearby, which one you think you're looking at, which way it should be relative to other islands or navigation aids. Your attitude must be not only you are not where you think you are, but you are not looking at what you think you're looking at, and you have to find out. I had one student look at an island and say, hmm, there should be a navigation light there. No navigation light. Oh well, it must be on the other side. I said to him, go look at the chart and see if it's on the other side or not. He looked at the chart and said, yes, it's on this side, so why can't we see it? Because it's not the island you think you're looking at. Now, he had no problem to work out our location by looking around and comparing islands and land features. But only after his instructor said to him, you are not where you think you are. Now, locating yourself doesn't mean taking three compass sightings on nearby land features and plotting them on your chart as you move ahead at six knots straight towards a rock. You don't have time for that. It means constantly being aware of the land and features around you at all times, knowing which is which on the chart, and constantly keeping aware of your location. Okay, my second tip is never venture into an area without first checking your charts. Never go anywhere if you haven't checked your charts. Even if you think you know an area very well, but then you drive off to look at the interesting shoreline, or maybe one of your passengers is interested to see that cabin on the shore. Don't go there without first checking your charts. Complacency is your worst enemy. Maybe you have an extra hour before the current turns in that pass, so you decide to drive around that little bay first. Check your charts. You're approaching a navigation station you've gone past a dozen times. But maybe you've forgotten how far out the reef extends. Check your charts. Okay, my next tip. All bearings must be to known fixes. If you're following a magnetic transit line, it must be to or from a known fix. Don't just look down that channel and say, ah, now I can turn to my next bearing. No, you can't. You must get to your magnetic line that you drew on your chart to a known fix. Turning to any magnetic direction in a random location is useless. And don't think a chart plotter is going to save you. People with chart plotters hit rocks all the time if they become so dependent that they become complacent. It's okay to use your electronic navigation to draw clearing bearings, magnetic transit lines and routes, or to identify the islands in navigation aids. But you have to look for those. Don't just rely on where the chart plotter tells you where you are. Okay, my next tip. Maybe you were able to pass your navigation course with a mark of 100%. But then, as soon as you get on the water, the first thing you might do is drive off without navigating. Well, then you could hit a rock pretty quickly. Do your planning. Draw your clearing bearings and magnetic transit lines before heading up. Then use them along with your charts to keep track of where you are and keep in safe water. Okay, my next tip. You may be the helms person driving the boat, while well, someone else is doing the navigating and advising you on directions and upcoming hazards. In this situation, as a helms person, you cannot stray from the instructions given to you by your navigator. You may certainly ask the navigator questions if you think you're being given a direction that doesn't appear safe. But you cannot wander off in any direction that you feel may be the direction to go without asking your navigator. And if you're the navigator, you need to do more than just communicate the next bearing. You need to clearly explain to the helms person where the hazards are, where the next turning points are, and explain the bigger picture so they understand where and why they're headed. Okay, my next tip. Let's say you're working your way to a destination. But there is a faster boat approaching from behind that is slowly catching up to you. 
I've known of this happening in at least two separate instances. While you are at the helm, you start moving over as the other boat gets closer. For some reason, you may feel that you need to get out of their way. You continue to move over as this faster boat comes up behind. Until you get too close to the shore, and then you hit an invisible rock extending out from the shore. Remember this. When you are being overtaken, you are the stand-on vessel. You have as much right to the water as they do. You are under no obligation to move out of their way. Don't worry about that overtaking boat. It's their responsibility to go around you. Okay, for now, here's my last tip. I've often heard someone say, let's follow that boat. They know what they're doing. No, you can't be sure that other boat knows what they're doing. I've seen other boats hit rocks. Follow your charts. Now, maybe watching where another boat is going might give you a hint, in case you're unsure. But don't blindly follow other boats, assuming that they know what they're doing. Follow your charts. Okay, that's the end of this lesson. I hope that was all clear. Navigation is both the science of locations, directions, tides and currents, aids to navigation, etc. But it's also the art of understanding what mistakes you can make, and adopting an approach of continuous monitoring of your location, and staying well ahead of your boat to keep aware of upcoming hazards, like rocks and logs. And just one more thing, did I mention this? You are not where you think you are. Okay, thanks for watching and stay safe.